Skull, welcome back to Valkyrie's Art Chrome Corner. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit the bell for notification when my new videos come out. Today we're going to do something a little bit fun. Um, I'm going to start out with circling the head and the neck, and then drawing the outline. And this person I'm drawing right here, I kind of time-lapsed it since it's going to take me a little bit. He's most commonly known as Naruto Uzumaki. He's from the uh, TV show uh, Naruto. Um, some of you younger generation who do love anime also call him Baruto's dad. <laughs> but that's not who I grew up with uh, watching him. Um, so, yeah, that's who we're drawing today is Naruto. And if you haven't already figured out, I am a huge, huge anime fan. And um, I like anything anime, anything cartoon. Um, so I'm kind of a, a nerd. So... <laughs> So, um, also, when we go to paint this, um, I'm doing it the Shonen Jump, which is the magazine that has a whole bunch of manga in it with, like, short stories. Or, if you're not familiar with manga, it's almost like cartoon strips, um, but you read it from um, left or right to left. So, you start at the back of the book and then go forward. But I'm doing the Shonen Jump version of Naruto rather than the actual television show where his bandana is black instead of blue. So now that I've gotten done drawing there, um, I'm actually getting my paints together because I was unfortunately was not organized at the time and forgot to set all my paints out. And we are going to start off with this skin tone. Um, it's a mixture of white, red, yellow, brown, blue, and then that's kind of what makes the skin tone more skin tone-ish instead of like pink. Just like in the Ethan Klein video. If you want to go check that out, it's actually a really cool video to watch as well. It's got three... Uh, three videos so enjoy yourself on that but we're gonna cover all that up here first and then we're actually not gonna wait for it to dry this time and I'm actually going to add a little bit of brown into it to do the shading so we're gonna do all the shading first And then what I'm going to do is use my finger to smudge it out. And if, if you do realize uh, that your colors are a little too sharp for the picture, like it, they stand out a little too much, you can either use your finger to blend it out, and that's the advantage of having like a, a slightly wet undercoat. Um, or what you could do is you can go back over with the original skin tone. Or when you go to do highlights, you can actually kind of blot it out a little bit. Alright, now that I'm done with the skin tone, I'm actually going to go into yellow. He has super bright blonde yellow hair. And do that all over, and I know it's super big, it's super spiky, so but it's fun. Um, and then just do that wherever you see hair. And since it's almost done there, um, what I'm going to do is to keep it along the yellow line and do, do the shading, I'm actually going to mix the brown tone that I used in his skin color to actually uh, mix it with the yellow and do the shadowing on the hair. And then we're just going to do that wherever we're going to see a shadow or where the light didn't shine on it too much. Um, so yeah, that would be like the little, on the corners of the triangle pieces up there, and um, yeah, so that's where the shadows are. And some of the spots are a little bit darker than others just because that's where it's at. So I'm actually just going to touch this up a little bit because my pencil lines were outside of it. So um, just to kind of clean it up a bit, the skin tone actually started to dry for the most part. 
so I went ahead and touched it up a little. Now we're going to take black for the headband. And at first I was just going to leave that area right there where the uh, actual hidden leaf plate on the headband would be. But then I decided to just go ahead and paint over it because it would give it that nice dark undertone that I would need for it rather than just leaving it silver and having to paint multiple layers. So that's the advantage of having an undertone layer. You can just always paint on top of it. And then I'm going to go over here and adjust this little piece of hair right here. I didn't like how long I had drawn it. So I went over it. Like I said, with black, you can go over anything. So. <laughs> and just finish up on his headband here. Again, if you're just joining us, remember I'm doing the Shonen Jump version, not the TV show Naruto where he has the black headband and not the blue headband. So. So I'm taking a dry brush, mixing in with skin tone and white, so that way we can get the highlights on his skin. And again, if it gets a little light for your taste, um, then you can just always go back over with skin tone or even shadow it down. Um, the reason why I went a little bit lighter on the, sh the highlights for this one, because in Shonen Jump, when they do their color shots, um, they tend to look very watercolory, so that's kind of what I'm going with. And that's what I like about acrylics is that you can either make them look like oil or you can do watercolor if you really water them down. So, yep, that's just, I, I like doing it that way. And then up on the hair, just add the highlights, just mix white and yellow together to get the, uh, the colors that you're wanting. Put a little there. And then we're going to color in his eye and then add a little black and gray uh, to make it like a gray tone on the top of his eye where his eyelid would kind of shadow his eye. And then add blue. And then we're going to mix a little bit of the brown, white, and black to kind of give it like a, a tannish color around the collar. I know it sometimes shows up kind of white, but for this purpose, I'm, I'm making it a little bit tanner and then graying that out on the side. And I'm going to use that gray to kind of highlight the uh, coat collar that he has just to make it stand out a little bit more. And if you come to find out that you mess up on it or anything like that, you could just go back with the lighter color or even a shade. You, a happy accidents happen, so you could always, always go back and fix those or just add to them. And then now since we had that dry, um, I'm going to do the same thing like I did with uh, SpongeBob SquarePants and actually highlight around it with the marker to give it more of that cartoony look even though it already looks cartoony, but um, just to have the solid lines go around it. And we're gonna do this all the way around until he's completely outlined. And in the, the black areas where the headband are, you really don't have to go in with the marker since um, it's already black, so you're not really gonna see it too much, but any part where you drew pencil markings or anything like that, do go over those so that way you can get that nice pop. And then one thing I, I kind of jumped around on this little get, bit again, and I do emphasize start from the top and go down. Um, otherwise you run the risk of dragging your marker into your finished product. Um, 
I've been doing it long enough to where sometimes I forget that and I'm showing the video to you guys on how to do it. So bear with me, I'm still trying to adjust my habits to actually show the right way to do it. Um, do as I say and not as I do is the saying. So, <laughs> But start from the top down to the bottom and then when you get more comfortable enough with your artistic ability and yourself to be able to kind of jump around and everything like that, then you can go ahead and do it. But otherwise, start from the top. Now I'm going to do his eye. I was deciding whether or not whether I was going to finish his nose or do the lines on the cheek or his eye. So that's what I'm going to do. Then outline the rest of his face, draw his mouth, and his nose, and the three marks on his face. I'm going to outline the, the rest of his eye and put a pupil. And then that's the whole outline. Um, since the black part has not dried just yet, um, I'm going to wait for it to dry a little bit. And the, or It's mostly dry, so I'll be able to add the silver to it. I just was concerned whether or not if it was completely dry, so I was going to test it out. If it worked, I was going to add the silver, and that's what ended up happening is we just went ahead and added the silver for the uh, forehead plate. And that's going to go right up here. We don't want it to go too far back because when he's looking at you, it's like a really long silver rectangle. But if, he's look if you're looking at it from the side, then um, it's going to show up kind of shorted off. And this is where the markings for the screws and the hidden leaf village uh, symbol goes on the front. But since it's wet, um, I'm going to leave it alone and let it dry. And instead of adding on another video clip, just to show you how to draw that, at the end of this video, you'll actually see a photo of the finished product on that. But yeah. Um, if you, you're interested in this drawing, um, check out my other videos. Otherwise, you can actually watch the uh, episodes yourself. It's Naruto. And it's a very fun series to watch. And it's very exciting, very energetic. It does have some up and downs. It will kind of play with you emotionally. Because you get really attached to the characters. And um, yeah, I just highly recommend it. What I did on that part right there, because it was still kind of like fuzzy on the edge. I took my marker and kind of outlined the back of the bandana just to kind of make it more crisp. And then you sign your painting either with marker or paint or whatever you were using at the time. And then I'll just wait for that silver part to dry. And then when the end pops up, you'll see a photo of it. So I hope you like this video. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.